It's an honour and a privilege always to be joined by my mate Moose from Kill the Lights. Moose, um, we spoke at the beginning of lockdown and it was frustrating for you to have released this new record, to have got a new band together, to be like rip roaring, ready to go. Um, how has the last couple of months been for you since? What have you been doing to keep busy when it comes to all things Kill the Lights? Um, well, yeah, first, that's why um, I was a bit I was a bit quiet on the last interview we did. I was a bit down, a bit deflated. Obviously, you know, the album went out and stuff, but then it was like, you can't even fucking tour it. So I was like, oh, yeah, man, mate. I've been waiting to do this since I left the other band. But, yeah, since, well, just been... We've been making good of good uh, good time off, you know. So we've started writing really. Ah, um, still, I love that. Not even fucking around, going for a new record already. Um, can I ask you about the Kill the Lights album? Do you think that it says a lot about the music that you, as a group of people, hold dear? Because it's not um, it's not so much what I expected as what I hoped for from you from this group of people. Um, that's nice to hear because there was no rule. There was no, let's sound like this. Let's try and sound like what we did back in the day. We just like, that's cool. I want to sound like me. Jordan wants to sound like Jordan. I wanted Jordan to sound like Jordan. Jordan wanted me to sound like me. And that's basically fucking what it was. If it was good, it goes on the album. So just in case anyone out there doesn't know who Moose is talking about when he's talking about Jordan, he's talking about Jordan Whelan, who used to be in Still Remains. Mate. What can you tell people out there that might not know Still Remains? Because they were one of the most underrated bands of the noughties, I think. Oh, they were incredible. I mean, we took them on tour with Bullet a bunch of times. They were just amazing guys, nice guys, and the fucking songwriting, second to none. And they were definitely, definitely massively underrated. But, you know, what can you do? I, I don't know. But... Uh, yeah, I'm glad I got him. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So when it came to, like, you spoke, I, I don't want to dwell too much on the past. We might do a bit later, but, like, I know that you were down after leaving Bullet and I can't imagine your life without music in it. You're one of the people that I meet and you meet people that like music and then you meet people that all they want to do is talk about music and really, really like throw themselves into it. And I've always put you in that category. Um, what made Jordan the guy that you reached out to when it came to, do you know what? Fuck this. I'm starting a band again. Um, it was just the fact of, I wanted to carry on. I knew I had to carry on cause I couldn't just, fucking chuck in, leave it all away after all the work I did before. So I was like, who, the, who could I, who do I get on with as a nice guy and into the similar music as me? And I was like, fucking Jordan. <laughs> and I was like, every time, every time we went through Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids, we'd hang out with Jordan. And I was like, fucking Jordan. It was just no brainer. First riff. Go on any riffs or what? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So Moose sent a, a three-word text message to Jordan to get to ask him to join the band, which was "Got any riffs?" And what did he send you? Did, was that was there? What, did that riff end up on the record? He sent me thirty songs. <laughs> Fucking hell, man! Oh uh, yeah, the first one he sent me was the Feastless. Lovely. <laughs> so I was like, "Here we fucking go." <laughs> so so how's it been putting this together because i can tell the bonds there i can tell the excitement is there but what isn't there is location because you are very much still in wales right i am right now yeah in my cow shed and is, is it <laughs> is he in grand rapids still he's in grand rapids yeah so it was all basically email text whatsapp whatever and then once we had um, three or four songs that we knew it was like okay this is fucking happening this is awesome but it was like alright obviously we need a fucking singer and then we I don't know we would just be in like museums and going hey these two guys from Russia let's try these out and they were like fucking terrible <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> this is massive frustration so I'm not on Facebook anymore but at the time I was on Facebook and I was just like last fucking I was like anyone know any singers who can fucking sing, 
and you know, just be a real good singer because that's what I love is melodies. And James messaged me, and he was like, um, "Yeah, I, I'll have a go." And I was like, "James from Florida Fight open for Bullet back in the day, and they were more like a rock Papa Roach vibe band." I was thinking, "Is could he do it?" And I was like, "No, man, you fucking you give everyone a fucking chance." Absolutely. And, and I sent it over, and what he sent back, I was just like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> And now that we're here, like, so did, did you record the record together in person, or was that done remotely as well? Because this is fascinating to me. Um, the drums were done in Chapel, where I did the first Bullet EP and the Poison. Um, so I was up there on my own with Colin, who also did the Poison, Colin Richardson, and Chris Clancy, who co-produced it, who was now our bass player, who was the singer for Mutiny Within. And... Um, I did it all on my own, which was really nice. And Jordan flew in for the last day of drum tracking. So it was just fucking nice just to go in there and drum with on my own. It was awesome. You know, no one going, you know, do this. This is not right. Hit the symbol. So it's just like, do do we want? Can I ask, is this, has this felt like a little bit of an exorcism for you, Moose? Because when you, when you talk, like that like uh, i'm swift enough at reading between the lines there like have you did you need this i did i uh, i don't know at the time i was just i was just going with it you know i was just like i like this is I, I, what i do i write albums and record albums and tour albums but looking back on it now it was such a, a breath of fresh air to know i could do something as good as if not better than what i've done before you know and it was just a nice kick up the ass, and a, I'm, yeah, I'm enjoying it now yeah. more than I back then. <laughs> yeah, well, that's I mean that that's that's kind of what I was getting at. It just it feels like this this experience has been cathartic for you, Moose. It's about more than just like I'm like I can't, I, I, I couldn't even finish that sentence of saying it's more than just playing your drums because I know what you're I know what the instrument means to you it's more than just playing drums but it really feels like this recording process this putting together a gang again like cuz yeah. that's part <laughs> of it like you when it comes to being in a band like you share every success as a group you play every show as a band together. There's a group dynamic. Was it about reinstalling a group dynamic in the band that you're going to work in? Um, yeah, I guess I just, I just miss, I could have easily done everything on a computer, you know what I mean? But I, I can't, I have to have people playing live with me. I can't, I, like, I, could, I can't sit behind a drum kit and just fucking play drums. I have to have a guitar. That's what drives me. Do you know mm. what I mean? I just, I just yeah. find, as much as I love drums, playing them on my own, fuck that. I'd rather go down the pub. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. G- yeah. Give, me a riff, give me a riff, a fucking killer riff, and I'd be like, I'm not going to pub. I'm playing heavy metal today. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned being down in that interview, which I'd, I'd be lying if I said I didn't pick up on, man. Like, what I wanted to ask was, I kind of think that's testament to how much you've enjoyed putting this together. Like, when you've put it together and you've uh, uh, like, and it's Christmas morning and someone's taken your presents, like, is that kind of... Is it testament to how much you have enjoyed the work and the music that you've put together that you were like, <sighs> about not being able to get and be in the whites of people's eyes playing on the stage yet? Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, we were so fucking stoked. We knew, we knew we had a good album. And then when we released it and everyone was like, fuck yeah, this is an awesome album. So we were like, yes. And then we were like, oh, we kind of felt like, it deserved more, and obviously by touring, we want to give it that push more. Mm. But you know, that's why I was down and stuff. And the boys were like, "Fuck, I wish we, you know, we're on tour right now and stuff." But there is light at the end of the tunnel, and the sinner will get played live. <laughs> <laughs> did you, 
Did you freak yesterday? Because just for time-sensitive reasons, yesterday there was a massive wave of news that a vaccine looks like it's on the way. Like, you're the first musician I've had the chance to speak to since that news has broken. What was the feeling like when you, when you read that? I follow it every day. I, every day I'm Googling COVID vaccine update. So there's going, oh, they into the first, second, third trials. But yesterday he was like, 90% fucking put it in my body. <laughs> <laughs> Is this an album that's begging to be played live as well? Oh, it has to be played live. That's all I've been doing is, you know, looking after the kids, taking the kids to school, coming in, a playing the sinner and stuff, and then obviously writing the new stuff. But I'm like, ah, it's getting a bit boring for me now because I've been playing it for the last three years. Yeah. You know, but it's still, but I need to get out. And these shows we do it in um in the UK back home. The boys were like um agents stuff like, do you want what do you want to do? And I said I want to do the smallest shows I possibly can do. I want to start this from the ground, and I want to go see how far we can go up with it. So. Let's just see that. I think those shows are going to be awesome. Do you remember what that was like, though? Because, like, you, in Bullet, I reviewed you for Metal Hammer when you were totally unsigned before the EP was out and everything. You played a showcase at the Highbury Garage that was one of the weirdest nights of my life. Like, no other metal bands. It was like a world music band and it was fucking weird as shit. And then you lot came on and was like, fuck me. Is it nice to re reconnect with that grip between your teeth, fucking like starting out like with something to prove? Is that is that part and parcel with wanting to get back into those sweat box venues and really fucking feel that condensation on the walls again? Yeah, I just feel like people who go to small shows at the start of a band's career enjoy music more than if they were go into an arena band, you know what I mean? Because these people are the ground roots people that will stick with you all the fucking, all the way to the arena if you ever get there, you know, or to the bigger venue or the next venue size up. So I just, I just fucking, I just remember in Bullet, we've been playing in front of three people for fucking years and years. Then all of a sudden, we was in a bar fly a lot in um, Camden. And all of a sudden we were on support bands, support acts, like with, um, Stamping ground. That was, that was a real. That's Holy the shit! Really? Yeah. <laughs> the day, all the labels were coming. We opened them for stamping ground. I fucking love stamping ground. I was like, this is fucking awesome. How we got off on the record deal at the end of it? I was like, where's the fucking bar? <laughs> <laughs> that is a decent evening, mate. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I just remember that going from there. And then we were doing our own shows there, and they were selling out. And then it was just getting bigger and bigger. And I was like, right, awesome. But then we kind of went over. Oh, too big, too fast, only for my liking. I mm. love building and building and building, but hopefully I get to do it with this band. But it was a lot of fun back in the day, yeah. Were you tempted to do the live streaming thing? Were you ever tempted to, to get involved in that? Because I've been quite impressed by some of the things that people have done out there. Was there ever a, temp a temptation to debut this live in a live stream environment? Or is that... Even saying it feels a bit too cold and clinical for your first, like, entrance to the yeah. world. I mean, we did, um, like, a pre-recorded, um, like, it wasn't live, but I did my parts, filmed them, and we put it all together. Obviously, we, we couldn't be together to be live, so um, even if, they, if that was on the, on the table, yeah, I would probably still hold back because I don't think, you know, we're established enough yet to... To get on there, but you know, we trying to do as much as we can online. But where we want to be is in people's faces at the moment. Absolutely, mate. Is twenty twenty one going to be your year, Moose? I ain't fucking stopping for no fucker. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, are you lot on download next year? We are indeed. Yes. Well, in which case, I will see you for a beer or three next June, my friend. Moose from Kill the Lights. The sinner is out now. Get involved with it if you haven't heard it so far, mate. Pleasure to have you on the show. All the best, man. Always, always. Stay in touch, Moose. I'll see you soon.